You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Suits After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Suits After Show. Get the shoulders moving. Oh, yeah. We're back, guys. <laughs> Bing, yes. Yes. Bing is for doing, and we are back doing Suits Season 3, Episode 1, The Arrangement. Now, we are missing Tara right now, but she will be joining us throughout the season when she can be in. And sadly, Melissa moved away, so she won't be back, but... I'm here. I'm Tiana Hobson, and I have my awesome co-host tonight. Yes. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Ashita Andre, and I'm so excited that Suits is back, season three. <laughs> Woo! I feel like it's been forever, but it really has only been a couple <laughs> months. It felt like forever for me, because, you know, I was really anticipating seeing that sex scene. If you guys do not know, that's where we left off at. And I yes. gave a really good, detailed explanation about it. Mm -hmm. And then we came back. And there was and nothing. And there's there nothing. Didn't even get to see a little something. Nothing. nothing. I, I, was, I was like, what happened? I was so ready to talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> uh, yes, but we will talk about Mike and Rachel. But mm -hmm. before we get there, um, I want to talk about this whole merger and the um ava ava what was ava hessington yes case with mike so first of all um or with harvey i'm sorry first of all harvey has decided to send scotty to london because he had that on the table from last season he got to decide if she was going to stay in new york or go and work in london and it was kind of deciding do you love her do you love her not right <laughs> and he chose with the kind of not but kind of still does, maybe. And you know what? I'm not surprised. I kind of figured he would choose London. Now, if he chose the L.A. office, I would have been shocked. Yeah. I think if he hadn't have been, if he wasn't feeling so betrayed by Mike and Jessica and just hating the world, maybe he would have room in his heart for love mm -hmm. at this point. But right now he's just so Amen. mad and just trying to get through some things okay. that he probably can't even really understand the feelings that he has for Scotty. Because they're really great together. Right. And I like the name Scotty. That's cute. Especially for a girl. I know. That's I so really adorable. Like, I really, <laughs> really like that. I mean, of course, it's just her last name. You know, she's right. Dana Scott. But Scotty for a girl is still a really cute it's name. It's cute. I like that. Um, So clearly, Jessica and Harvey are still on not so good terms. Harvey is gone. Um, he's representing Darren Williams. Um, he's an NBA player, for those of you guys who did not know that. Um, so he's negotiating this deal with the Brooklyn Nets to get him more money. And Jessica's upset because he negotiated behind his back. And she thinks he's acting out so that he can get fired since their deal was if he lost to Darby, then he had to stay and extend his non-compete. And he's basically stuck at a job that he hates which I kind of understand, Harvey. Um, <laughs> I think we've all been there before with jobs. Yes, we that have. Yes, we not, have. Yeah, you're not happy with, and you're being forced to stay there. It's just horrible. But also, too, it's so cutthroat now. Nobody is really, you know, aligning up with each other like mm -hmm. they used to in the last season, and everybody is just lying to each other, you know, putting on these fronts across the board. Mm -hmm. And it's like, who do you trust? But Harvey who just has this stance about him where he's just so confident and he always knows what's going on even when he doesn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I like that about him. And so it just it saddens me because, you know, they used to have, and I don't know why I'm always talking about sex all the time, but they just <laughs> had these sexual innuendos amongst each other, you know, him and Jessica, and I'm going to miss that. Yes. 
<laughs> right now, him and Jessica are not very sexual tension. It's just no. straight tension. Yeah, it's just straight tension. <laughs> straight <laughs> tension. Like you could cut that with a butter knife. Yes. Is that the saying? Yes. Yes. I'm like, dang. Yeah. So Jessica, <laughs> Darby has decided that he needs Harvey's kind of cutthroat style to help him with this oil case that he has with um, Ava Hessington, who it turns out that Darby has a very deep connection with Ava through her what is father. That what is that deep connection? I think you said it as, as I know, they but were I'm going to be politically correct. Yeah. But what do you, I mean, you know, well, you know what? Tweet us. Let us know what you think. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think that relationship <laughs> That relationship is? is. They didn't really say it. It kind of leaves you They kind of to guess. Yeah, they kind of left it open ended like you could take what you want, of, interpret it as you may. Right. Um I interpreted it as a relationship with her father. Yeah. That's how I chose to interpret that. I could be wrong. Everyone has their own thing. <laughs> um, so Darby wants Darby wants Harvey on this case. Jessica does not because Harvey's still acting out and like a child. Acting out, right. Yes, he's acting out because he's not happy. Mm -hmm. um, so when, so that's, you know, the whole power struggle with this new merger where Darby kind of pulls rank. He's like, well, hey, I'm the 51%. You're the 49%. So yes, basically he you came. Well, you know what? He first he was like, no, it's you know, it's it's I'm being polite. It doesn't have it's, yeah, Pearson, it's Pearson and Darby, Darby, but it was supposed to be Darby Pearson. Mm -hmm. And so when she realized his angle, it was like, oh, okay, so it's not really fifty fifty. Yeah, that was kind of yeah. smooth. It was. Well, you can't trust lawyers, can you? <laughs> That's what I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is just cutthroat. Yeah, it's like no, thank you, um, but. When Jessica goes to Harvey with this information and, you know, oh, we, we're going to put you on this, I had to talk, convince him to let you on the case. He didn't want you to right. even do this. She's kind of spinning it so that Harvey will be more up apt to do it because he hates Darby. But who does he hate more at this point, well, Darby or Jessica? But here's my thing. Jessica knows Harvey so well. Why would she think she can do that and him not figure it out? That's what I don't get. Why anyone is still trying to outdo anyone else at this law firm. Right. Because they always figure it out. They always come back with that line at some point throughout the episode that is something along the lines of, well, I was going to do it this way. But then I thought, what would insert name here do? Mm -hmm. And that's when I figured out you would do it this way. So you're actually trying to play me and get me to do right, it Right, because so, like Harvey said, yeah. you didn't ask, you demanded. Yeah. So, and she went in trying to be a good cop, mm -hmm. you know, doing it herself, and she lied to me. So it's, it's, but I just don't understand how Jessica can go in thinking that he's not going to find out. Exactly. Unless she has another angle. Because she has to know he's going to find out. She has to know that. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what she tries to do, she tries to get him, she's been trying to get him in line since like season one. Right. <laughs> But that's why she hired him, though, yeah. because she knew he calls his bluff. And she, calls people's bluff, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, she trained him. Right. She created this monster. And right. now the tornado's spinning a little bit out of control, and once you lose control of the tornado, you can't really do anything about what it destroys. True. Good point. Dang, that was that a was good analogy. That was good. That was good. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that that's one. That's a little pound pound. Yes. <laughs> what? That just came out. I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> um, so Harvey, um, he needs to find out more about this Ava Hessington. Mm -hmm. um, she She's started a trip. out. Yeah, she is a trip. She started out in London. So who does Donna say he needs to go get some help from since he's not talking to Mike at this point? Right. But Miss Scotty. Scotty. So Scotty and Harvey have this awesome conversation in the airport where she's still going to London, mm -hmm. but... He basically has to confess that he does have feelings for her before she will help him, which, God bless her, she's a better woman than me because I might not have. Do you think that he was saying, I have feelings for you just to get her to help, or do you think they were genuine? His stories make me feel like it was genuine because he, she was going to say, you know, oh, yeah, the first time we met in Con Law, and he was like, no. I saw you two weeks before that because I was stalking you, girl. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he but, seems so... He seemed genuine to me in that book. He seems genuine, but does he seem genuine because he's that good at being genuine? I thought that, too, because lawyers, to me, are kind of like actors. Yes. You know, you never know if they're playing a role mm -hmm. or just to saying what you need to hear them say. Right. But 
with when it comes to Scotty, I feel like there's that respect of honesty between the two of them that regardless, he will ultimately give his true response to her. Mm -hmm. It might take her, you know, manipulating him to get it out of him. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, I don't think that he would lie to her in this way because he knows how she feels about him. Her cards are already laid out on the table. So I don't think he would take those to manipulate her. Hmm. Harvey's know. good. <laughs> now, I would actually believe you with that because he's, he's so big on loyalty. Mm -hmm. So I, I may, but I was wondering, I'm like, okay, is he playing the card? Is yes. he playing? Uh, he's, is he playing on her weakness so that he can get what he needs so he can take it? You know, because he has to win. Yeah, that's the thing. He has to win this case because he, he made, made the deal. A, he made the deal. So I wasn't sure if he was being genuine or not, mm -hmm. or if he was just playing on that sensitivity, that little that chip that he knows he has, <laughs> that car that he knows that he, he knows has he to has. get what he wants. So, but that's up in the air. We'll we'll definitely see it. Yeah, we'll down see the how line. that one yeah. plays out. But let's meet Ava Harrington, because first of all, <laughs> I just have to say I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Michelle Fearley is Lady Stock, if you will, um, is playing Ava Hessington. And along with that, um, Conleth Hill, who plays Edward Darby, also on Game of Thrones. So it's kind of like a the British are coming because, you know, right. they have this merger from London. And then on top of that, you have these two amazing actors from Game of Thrones. And quick side note for everyone who's a fan of both shows, while she was there filming this episode or one of her episodes, um, the Red Wedding episode of Game of Thrones aired. And a lot of people on the cast of Suits are huge Game of Thrones fans as well. So they all like wrote to her and emailed oh, her and were nice. like, oh, my gosh, what happened to you? I'm not going <laughs> to say anything in case someone hasn't seen the full episode of Game of Thrones, Red Wedding. But anyways, <clears throat> that's my quick little thing about Game of Thrones being on Suits just made my heart nerd out completely. <laughs> now, I don't watch out. Game of Thrones, so I'm not sure what's oh, going girl, on. Oh, girl, you need to. But b seeing her on Suits, mm -hmm. I, maybe I'll watch Game of Thrones she now. Is, she was good. She was good. And you know what I like about her character is that she kind of didn't take any of Harvey's crap. She was right there level with him the mm -hmm. whole time. She was like, well, I haven't hired you. But Me of course she did. Darby. She told too much, and she gave up too much information. Yeah, she confessed. To she confessed being to guilty. everything. So she, yeah, that's why he said yes, you have. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like them. So she has this bribery charge to get a pipeline built, something like that. I mean, <laughs> pipelines and oils. Pipelines I don't, and oils. I don't There's understand all corruption the in with that. intricacies of that. Right. Um, but you know, their argument is kind of that if she were a man, which she's dominating this male-oriented field. Everyone does deals like this. Everyone has done the same thing. She's just being made the example of because she's a woman or because um, this guy, Richard, who Harvey used to work with at the DA's office, has like a agenda of his own because he's running for off mm -hmm. for election. And his number one donor is also her number one competitor. So interesting. There's all these conflicts of interest that happen, which I'm kind of wondering regardless of um, Harvey finding out about this, wouldn't it have been a conflict of interest? Wouldn't people have found out that he, his number one donor, like helped him take out the competition? You know, like there, he took out his donor's competition for them. Right. And maybe we'll find that out in the next episode. He makes me seem like he's a dirty mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. already. All and you dirty. haven't even been elected. Right. They're all dirty before they're elected. That's how yeah. they get elected. Now, let me stop. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> yes. Help me get elected and I'll do this. <laughs> Help me get elected and I'll do that. Yeah. So Har know. Harvey has all these meetings with him trying to get him. Harvey's like, hey, look, man, I did you a solid back in the day. Right. I need you to do me a solid right now because I have to win this because I have to get out of this place and he's not budging on it so then um when harvey finds out about this whole oil competitor thing he bring um, richard brings in cameron as a special prosecutor mm. and clearly harvey and cameron have a past there's some history there there's some history because he changed there. his deal because of it yeah can't back down from a fight and i mean who doesn't love it when gary cole comes into a show he's right. always gonna be so good so great and amazing. So this prompts Harvey to go back to Darby because he doesn't back down from a fight. Mm -hmm. So now his fight 
renegotiated thing. If he wins this Ooh. case, Darby has to back him for managing partner, oh, which means wow. Harvey has now declared war on Jessica. Declared war. Oh this, my God, this is gonna be so good. I mean, I feel like we're still settling the from the war. But the sexual innuendos will be gone. <laughs> I mean, at what point do you stop all the wars? You know, like they just got <sighs> done battling. Hardman, is he really gone? Because I mean, they still have all of those lawsuits with the sexual harassment with right. both was it, was it wholesome, Folsom, Folsom, Folsom Foods? Folsom Foods. I mean, they have the edge right now because of what Mike did, but they're still, I mean, Hardman could still be coming back. And if he comes back and Jessica and Harvey are split too, it's just going to make it so much easier for him to get in between them and take them Right, because if you're not strong internally mm -hmm. and then that gets out, then they're going to find, and that's a that's an area of weakness because mm -hmm. you can get to somebody else, exactly. bribery or whatever, but because there's no loyalty there, it's easy for someone else to do whatever it is they want to do. To sneak their to way sneak in their there way in, in. The in the cracks, and next thing you know, your whole empire is just it's gone, crumbled. crumbled. So, I mean, hopefully they get that back together because I know. we don't need none of that. Now, mm -hmm. let's move on to Mike and Rachel. Ooh. Because I know like you were of, expecting yes. a, a to be continued from the season finale yes. where we saw them in the library. The climax. The, the, I yes. needed to see that. We saw, <laughs> literally, she wanted to see I that. I wanted to see it. <laughs> we did not get to see that. I know. But I loved how, okay, the start of season two, Mike is on the top of the road. He's dating Ginny. He's, you know, got a little pep in his step in that first episode. Jessica's called him in for dinner and he doesn't really know that she has found out about his secret. Right. Season two ends with Mike being in the doghouse with Harvey. He's kind of, we don't know if he's actually in the doghouse with Rachel or not because, you know, they did sleep together, but she was slapping him. And was that foreplay? Was it anger? Maybe both. Maybe both. Maybe both. But I love that, you know, he started out the season one way and ended in a completely different place. Mm -hmm. And now it's picking up two days later. I know. Who do, uh, two why, days why, later. Why do we want that? I want to start where it left <laughs> off. <laughs> well, two days later, Mike wakes up from a nightmare, which he had, which the <sighs> show started and... <laughs> He's. Uh, I really need to talk to the writers. I'm really <laughs> upset about that. <laughs> you know, they're fin finalizing the terms of the merger. Mm -hmm. Harvey's called him in. Jessica and him have agreed he should be there. They're shaking hands, and then before the ink is dry, Rachel comes in, proclaiming his secret, saying he's a, he's fraud. a fraud and all this stuff. And I was like, this has to be a dream. I, th Which, I knew it was a yeah, dream. Of course, it was a dream. So he wakes up from his nightmare and goes over to Rachel's house. She's like, Ooh. No, I need time. <laughs> I have to process all this information you gave me <laughs> and the fact that we slept together and now my feelings are torn. And he was like, look, girl, you and I both know what we should be doing right now because it felt good doing it two days ago and that's all I can think And about. that's so cruel <laughs> to talk about it and not show it. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So if we're, gonna, if we're gonna get you some ice, cool you down. <laughs> It okay, wasn't I'm there. Good. Maybe I know, next yeah, episode. Maybe next episode. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Rachel basically tells Mike, hey, look, if you were to walk in there tomorrow and quit, that's one way that you never have to fear that your secret will, secret will come out, that you'll end up in jail for it. You know, there's so many things that could happen if right. you are exposed. But I won't be the one to expose you. Now, hold on for a second. I thought that she was going to say... You can go to law school. I thought she was going to say gonna, that too. I was really going to think she said to go to law school. Because I've been thinking that. I mean, right? Just go to law school. Just take some night classes at right. Harvard, and but maybe it'll come out some way because it'll be on the books. Yeah, that know. he didn't graduate till years it's later. Two years but later. I mean, at that point, just still just, go to law. Yeah, I thought I least, thought she was going to say that. It'll I help was you sleep shocked. better at night if you right. actually had a law degree. Right. Because then, you know, at the worst, they can't say you didn't have mm -hmm. a law degree. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, Mike goes into the office the next day prepared. Do you really think he was going to quit? I don't know. Um, No. I mean, he went in there like, I was, I I'm prepared to it. quit. It's suits. They both got to be in the office together yeah. wearing the suits. Jessica <laughs> decides, you know, to give him his own office, a very nice office for an associate. Right. Mm -hmm. 
which kind of screams there's something going on yes. to the other people that are working in the office. Like, why does he get that? It just, it seemed too much, mm -hmm. to, in my opinion. In mine, too, because it looks like one of those things that is you betrayed Harvey. Or, you know, she twisted it as, you know, look what you did for the company, for right. you helped us with all these cases all at the same time. You deserve this. But to outsiders looking in, it looks like, who did you screw over right. to get or that? Screw. Because, yeah, or screw. Okay, did um, I say I was done? Yeah, I did. did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those two things. What did you do to get this office as a associate? Right. Um, she tells him he can take it as a symbol of what she what he accomplished for the firm or a reminder of what he did to Harvey. Either way, it was his and, and he, it was his problem to deal with. Right. Um, so, you know, Rachel, of course, sees that he hasn't resigned, gets a little mad at him at the office so that, you know, the next time we see him, he's actually writing his letter of resignation. He's going to make a copy and that's in Lewis. Love him. Lewis sees he's him. So funny. And Lewis actually gave him some good. Lewis was being nice to Mike. Mm -hmm. He gave him some good advice because Mike said, you know, Harvey wants nothing to do with me. I really don't need to be here anymore if I don't have Harvey. Harvey's cold. When yeah. he doesn't like you, he doesn't like you. Oh, yeah. You see the look that he gave when he, he first walked into the ice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> ice. <laughs> Harvey does not play. Yes. No, not at all. So Lewis tells him that how Harvey used to be Superman. Mm -hmm. when they were associates together their first year, and then Hartman decided to give him an impossible task, and Lewis went to kind of try and knock down the barrier to make a friendship, and Harvey still shut him out. Um, and it's like, wow, now Harvey is not Superman anymore. Now he's Batman, and he meets his Robin, who is um, Mike. Right. So Which Lewis says, brilliant. fight for your man, basically. Right. I like the way you put that. Fight yeah. for your man. Fight He's telling him to fight man. for his man. Um, so Mike does that. He goes to the IT guy, Benjamin, tries to blackmail him or something into getting him access to Harvey's caseload. Harvey just is not feeling help from Mike at all. No. He's, like, shutting him down at every turn he makes. He finally accepts some help when he um, gives him that file that helps him, you know, figure out the oil company and the right. merger and all that stuff. Um, so that's the first time Harvey took his help, but even Donna was saying, you know, you can take his help, but that doesn't mean you forgive him. Right. And so you always but have Donna there. You always have Donna. I like Donna. I love Donna. She's, she's but so But still, I, I think that she should have Mike's back a little bit. But, but I again, liked their conversation that they had because she was right. You know, she was right. you didn't just do that to Harvey. You did it to me, too. Mm -hmm. I've had your back since you've been here. Like both of those two have never really faltered on Mike. You True. know, they've always stuck by his side, always been loyal to him. And that's what Harvey was saying in their conversation, too. Look, you should have been loyal to me. You should have came to me with what Jessica was blackmailing you with. And we would have figured it out together. Together instead of you just making decisions for me and screwing right. me over in right. the long run. Right. Which so, I agree with him on. Yeah, so their relationship definitely is going to have some issues building up to mm -hmm. it. But Mike and Rachel seem to be doing well. They have talked out their problems. You know, Mike shows back up. Hey, I'm going to tell you everything that happens. And after that, we're either going to be done or we're going to end up in that bed. They ended up in that bed. I like that. You, would, you wish they had shown a little bit of it, but... No, it's okay. I'm over it now. It's kind of like when you wait too long, and you're like, you know what? Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm over it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> Just forget about it. Um, <sighs> so it'll be interesting to see where Mike and Rachel end up now, because... They are kind of a couple, I guess. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. Donna knows about them because Donna knows everything. Right. Donna is Donna. She is god of piercing For, yes. Darby. Yeah. And she caught them. Like, don't try to get, you know, Rachel to come and take me away yeah. so you can go and drop. But I love. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm about to go into another store and you haven't got there yet. <laughs> oh, you go <laughs> with the folders, and he's like, "Oh yeah, there's seven more folders." Yeah, in, is. in your office. <laughs> in your office, exactly. It's like everybody knows everyone, and you have to be a step above mm -hmm. just to get what you need, 
or the tape recorder went to the IT guy. Yeah. And was recording them. And it's like, look, you just committed, you know, a mm -hmm. felony. <laughs> and it's like, okay, what do you want? It's like everybody is a step ahead. I've never worked in a place like that. Me either. And I'm just like, how do you know these people so <laughs> well to where you can sit there and manipulate a situation or bribe them somehow? Yes. It's exactly. just, it's crazy. Um, and speaking of knowing us well, guys, go on to after our on to iTunes actually find our after show suits um, and rate us, comment, leave us a message, tell us what you like, what you don't like, let us know how we're doing, give us some feedback. We do this show because we're fans of the show. You're fans of the show. Let us know what you're thinking on everything that's happening so far in this season. And since you're online already, make sure you check out Serial Buddies. You can find it at SerialBuddies.com. It was produced by our AfterBuzz TV founders, Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. Um, it's hilarious. It's so funny. I, it's like Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber. It is, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that funny. I've seen it multiple times. It's got Beth Bears, Artie Lang, Kathy Lee Gifford, Christopher Lloyd, just to name a few of the actor, amazing actors in that movie. So mm -hmm. make sure you go check that out. And it helps us, you know, keep the lights on here. We don't ask much from you guys. So if you could give back to AfterBuzz in that way, yes. it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, so I want to talk quickly about Lewis and Nigel their relationship that's weird so lewis is freaking out over this barbara l tottingham who's stolen who's taken away his uni balls if he had said uni ball <laughs> one more time i think donna was gonna slap him um <laughs> and i love when she got him to smudge the ink right over and then his the hand, head and yeah. then the hand gesture to look like hitler <laughs> yes. donna you get me in so many ways <laughs> um and then he takes away his raspberry brand bars and that's when um Nigel comes in and is like, yes, BLT, and there's mayo on that, and something about a Monte Cristo in France, and somehow all this led back to it being him. Lewis always ends up in some weird situation. <laughs> He's always in some something weird where it, it's like over the top. Yes. But I love his character. I love his He's character. He's hilarious. Too. He um, basically goes and tattles. Right. On Nigel goes to Darby requesting that he make him quartermaster so that he can have control over this, which, like we've been talking about, everyone's three steps ahead of the other person. Mm -hmm. So he then goes and does exactly what Nigel wanted him to do so that Nigel now has control of the associates, which that is Lewis's right livelihood. Right. He lives to terrorize the associate. <laughs> and without that, who is he here? Well, we'll see we'll how he see. gets him back because you know Lewis doesn't go down without a fight no he's not well he thought he was putting up a fight this time and he ended up digging his own grave he did but I think he's gonna come back oh yeah he always comes back he always comes back we gotta see how he comes back um yeah so let's get into some news and gossip news now. and gossip Ooh. okay after buzz yeah. TV news well I have something from zap to it and uh, Mike Ross, Patrick J. Adams, talks about his suits. And he said, because my mom, who always said she wanted me to be a leader of tomorrow and sent me to private schools, remember vividly saying, I will never wear a suit to work. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are years later, and she loves it because she loves suits. I love suits. I love the way they look in suits. Oh. There's nothing better than a man dressed in a custom fit suit. It's I very sexy. It is. And I think it's very reminiscent to how my grandpa wakes up every morning and still puts on a suit. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how gentlemen know, used to yes, dress. Yes, we don't dress and like that anymore. We don't dress like that anymore. So the fact that he ha is being forced to wear a suit to work every day, Patrick, it just it just does something for the it, ladies. It just, it's working. Mm, and he said that she loves me getting dressed up. She laughs every time she comes to the set. <laughs> it's so funny. And he talks about you know some other things as well, um, personally, which is really good. So zaptoit.com, which did a really good uh, article on Mike Ross, which is actually Patrick J. Adams. <laughs> also, too, since I, I vaguely remember, but I'm sure our super fans will help me remember about the kitchen utensil 
which is the can opener. Yeah. Do you remember a little bit about that? I do. I remember them. They have this strange obsession with this can opener that they have not explained. Harvey and Jessica, or uh, Harvey, Harvey and, and Donna. Donna, have this weird connection to yeah. it. Yeah. Where I don't know, maybe it's the first a signature of their friendship, or I don't know what it. Well, means they talked. They talked about it here on um, Yahoo.com. And Harvey talks about how when they read the script, they literally were speechless because it's going to show us really what the can opener is all about. So stay tuned, super fans, because I want to know about this can opener and what's it all about. Because there's a lot of rumors out there, you know, maybe Harvey and Donna had a relationship in the past. Maybe mm. they haven't. Who knows what how they got as close as they are so i am very interested to see what happened with that can of i, I love flashbacks too. where we get more information on the background of the characters all right well i'm excited he talks about how his eyes popped out when he read the script so i want to see you know i always want to yeah. see <laughs> Let's so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, news and gossip. Let's get into some predictions. <laughs> I think I know what a and sheet now, is going to be. <laughs> your After Buzz TV predictions. Um, do you want to go first? Well, do my we know your predictions. Well, already? my prediction. I think that Jessica is going to find out about Harvey wanting to be managing partner and take her out. Okay. And I predict that she's going to handle it so well that it's going to shock Harvey. Mm, interesting. Because, you know, Jessica's always on point. Yes. Always on point. So I think that it's going to come back to her that she's going to find out. Oh, yeah. She will definitely know she's what's gonna, coming. Yeah. Um, I'm going to predict. I like your prediction. I also want to predict that um, since Harvey and Mike are having a, tiff of the relationship right now and it looks like Lewis is going to try and kind of steal Mike away. I think that Harvey might start leaning on someone else as his go-to person. Mm. That person might be Katrina Bennett who we know that the last time we saw her um, her and Mike and Rachel were kind of at an odds right. in oh, a little wow. battle. So I'm going to predict that maybe that will bring her back into the mix of things because she wasn't there tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to predict that Hardman will be back with this Folsom Foods case, still yes, trying I to definitely see that coming get back. his way into back into mm -hmm. Pearson Darby now. Pearson Darby. Pearson Darby. So... Hi. Guys, let us know what your thoughts are. Yes. Um, where can they find you on social media? Uh, tweet me, Ashida on Ray, A S H I D A O N R A E, and I will tweet you back. And you can find me on Twitter at TweetT22 or on Instagram at Tiana Hobson. So, um, guys, I'm so excited mm -hmm. that Suits is back. Yes. We will be here every week with you guys watching the episodes and breaking them down. So be sure to tune in and tell a friend. Until next week, bye, Suiters. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.